Okay. Well, that's why those were doing white. Yeah. Sweet. No, but it is just natural. <laughs> but this is all again. And this is not a spring chick. And today we're going to be talking about the changing phase of 3D in the theaters. Yeah, basically, uh, everybody knew it was coming. The motion picture theater, the motion picture producers have decided that 3D is too expensive. Mm -hmm. And now they're trying to bury it. Well, see, here's part of it. Now, who decided that? The, okay, the same people that decided that we're going to go. Okay, the TV manufacturer decided we need to bring in 3D because we'll increase sales. And then when they didn't have the product for the TVs, the sales tanked. Mm -hmm. And then the motion picture producer decided to jump on the bandwagon because it could end up with, uh, you know, eight, nine dollars in extra, uh, extras on the ticket for them. But they discovered there's a basic problem with 3D. It's expensive mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. We have 3D cameras. Mm -hmm. you, if you shoot 3D as 3D is meant to be done, which, which is a fixed focal length, it doesn't cost as much. But what they're doing is they're basically, they're, the, some of them are mounting two, two cameras, two of the big cameras on a rail system and it zooms in and out that way, which is doing a fixed focal length. Others are just rejiggering their cameras to do zooms. Well, you know, part of it is, is when we were watching, what was it, ESPN was telling us, they said, we shoot in 5D. We're going, what's 5D? We have a 3D crew and we have a 2D crew and we shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Because That's what their 5D was. Well, we shoot solely in 3D because we know that something you can do with 3D that mm -hmm. the people that are out there don't understand they can do, mm -hmm. which is to turn it into a 2D. Mm -hmm. It gives you the most god awful beautiful 2D picture. If you have enough light. If you have enough light, it's, but you have to have light for 3D to begin with, mm -hmm. and high depth. High depth does not work well without light, which is, I mean, like we're standing underneath about two, three, four, I don't know, four lights above us, and and and, and twelve hundred watts of light in front of us. The other part is you can also always make a 2D, a 3D movie. Yeah, which is what most of them really do. They do the conversion. And time. usually we can tell when we're watching it how they shot it. Yeah, because some of the, some of the, you know, it really. Because part of it is we know the capabilities of the cameras, yeah. and based on how they're shooting it and how they're utilizing those capabilities, we can kind of tell them oh, what they yeah, did. Yeah. You know, yeah, okay. Uh, 3D, you cannot go right to left fast. They just can't be done. So, <laughs> but if you go right to left and you see a 3D shot, it means they, they've after marketed it. So, but. Uh, but what's happened though is that the um, the movie producers have all got together. I mean, we're looking Disney, every yeah, Sony, the whole you mean rest, the studios, the studio, the movie producers, studios have got together and decide they need to cut the cost of production. Instead of just simply not spending two hundred and fifty million dollars on a movie, they want to spend the same two hundred and fifty million, but they want the movie theaters, like the National Organization of Theaters, to pay for them making three D movies. Well, see, here's part of it is. If you, if what they said was that if, um, for a 3D movie, right, for, uh, I guess a big one, yeah. costs five to ten million dollars for 3D glasses worldwide, yeah. go ahead and provide all of them. Now, but here, uh, here's a problem. They stepped on themselves when they said worldwide because um, everywhere else but the United States you're made to pay for your glasses. Oh, really? So they're not spending that kind of money worldwide. Oh, because they gave all these examples of other places where the people buy their own glasses. Yeah, where they buy their own will. That, that this is going to be a source of revenue for the theaters. Well, no, if, uh, we know people that last, what, last year at CES, mm -hmm. we have their glasses. We wear their glasses. Oh, Marshawn. Marshawn. And they plan to come out. Actually, the last time we talked to them, which wasn't more than a couple of months ago, they said they were going to be in the theaters. They were going to be in the theaters in a kiosk this summer. Now, part of it is I did see them, they came out with a press release saying they were yeah. going to be in a few theaters in Orange County. Yeah. Which I thought it was going to be much broader distribution. So you have to hit a little bit. There's no, dem okay, there was no demand for people to buy the glasses. What, what we have, okay, the Marshallines mm -hmm. are going to be reading the price. Ours are Gunner, and ours are Gunner are really expensive as are our and the Calvin uh, Kleins. And the Calvin Kleins. But you know, the Calvin Kleins you can use in the sunglasses too. Yeah, so. but, um, but uh, the fact is, ours are very uh, very high price. But, uh, 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 you know, they're basically, uh, they're basically the, they, they said the, the trade organization, National Associate of Theater Owners, they, uh, they said it's insensitive to exhibitors to continue economic distress because 
they had to rejigger their theaters to put in 3D projection systems. Mm -hmm. It cost them a lot of money. They also have to hire a person that's capable. Okay, the only way you can run, you can run 2D off a 3D projection system by changing the lens, but that's not something that's done really quickly. Well, actually, we've seen that before. Yeah, where they basically didn't get the, okay, they didn't get the lens changed and then they discover it during the commercial, during the, the thing beforehand that all, oops, why did well, not move? Well, see, part of it is we realized it because we're watching a 3D movie and then they showed the commercials beforehand, which were not shot in 3D. Yeah, and it, it really mm -hmm. makes them look weird. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, so, but um, uh, it, it, you had to put in the proje new projection systems, which are expensive because they put them in like four or 5,000 theaters in this country. They've got a massive investment in 3D. Well, here's, here's the big deal. We've got two companies that basically provide most of the um, most of the projectors in this country for theaters. One is Christie. Mm -hmm. Who's the other one? Sony. Yeah. Sony is basically cutting its own throat. They're supplying most of the 3D equipment for the theaters and then telling the owners, well, you're going to have to kick in 4 to $5. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, is that that's money that's being kicked into the, the movie companies and it's not money that the, the theater owners are going to get back because the, how you, if, if these are so god awful expensive, how can you make money by having to sell glasses for four to five dollars every time if they're so expensive that the movie companies can't afford them? Because I talk to the people in China, I know what they cost. The more they, the more you make, the less they cost. Uh huh. Yeah. So if you turn out, you know, I, I would put it this way. Uh, it's just it's a very small percentage. Yeah. A, a guy told me how they're priced, and the pricing is one of the people the manufacturer. Was it? Was it, it was, um, was it CES or NAB? It might have been one or the other. One. But he was telling me how they, how you know what the. He said, how if you're if you're buying them, you know what the price is, and he said, so you got to be kidding. He said, no, that's and not we were talking price. about an astronomical markup. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I guess part of it depends on how you buy them, but part of it is the 3D glasses that are in the theater. Okay, let's just say you know that they open up the box and they're all in the little plastic things. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. then the fact is that what the people, um, the, they, they move, the production companies, the studios don't get it through their thick head that there's the cost of the people having to go gather up all the 3D glasses. Yeah. There's the cost of tossing the 3D glasses and taking the time to remove the busted 3D glasses. And you can't put those glasses back out there until they've been cleaned. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have a cleaner. That's the part that actually takes more time. You have to have a cleaner for, for your glass, every, every business. And then they have to reseal them. Yeah. Which actually, all that labor is more expensive than initially manufacturing them putting them in the bag. Yeah, it's the labor it's afterwards because it, my guess is they, 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 they steam them, you know, they got a steamer, a dryer, and then they put them in the bag and then they got it, and then they put them back out again. Mm -hmm. Because if you've ever seen some of those, some of those things around those bags, not, you know, we've that seen on, you know, sort of like the side thing where they just kind of hurt too. But somebody has to be, it's just like, um, like my mother, my mother, you know, uh, when she got older, she worked for one of the, um, the you know, she was in charge of the bakeries for one of the larger uh, grocery chains in the country. And they basically, because of all they had to set bottles and cans, they had to pay extra people to pay, you know, to, to take the bottles and cans at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and well, we didn't think we didn't understand that. Well, it was costing the businesses more money to take the bottles and cans back in than they were getting off of their five cents deal. So they basically went to court and won that battle. So you don't see it being bought in grocery stores anymore. But this is the trick: you have to dedicate people in every theater to pick up the glasses from everybody. You know, I still think this is part of this all negotiating tactic that they just want somebody else to pick up the cost of them. Because part of it is, as a theater goer, you're already paying usually typically a $4 premium to see a 3D movie. Yeah. So you're thinking, okay, we're already paying for production costs, we're paying for the theater costs. Paying for you the know, cost. Because, you know, in some of those movies, if you get, okay, mm -hmm. let's just say if you get an early matinee, you can't get them as low as 6 or $7 to go to the theater and then attack on $4. It's like a 50% more. 
yeah. right, to the cost of, or you know, a lot of times when people are paying like twelve dollars plus an extra four four dollars, yeah. it's it's flat. It doesn't matter what time you go. Yeah, but it, uh, mm -hmm. it, here's the problem. Like I'm reading it here for the. He said the studios never intended to pay for the 3D glasses indefinitely. They, you know, uh, theaters counter. It has been uh, the onus has been on them to upgrade their theaters so that the producers can show their product and charge higher for the tickets. But then the uh, the owner, then the, th then the movie producers say, well, it is not our it is not our position that you have to upgrade your theater. It's not our position you have to show 3D movies. We're producing these movies so that you'll have an extra revenue stream. No. Where, where does the extra four dollars go? It, 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 because they're not paying. They're not paying five to ten million dollars for glasses. First of all, it's it's part of the advertising budget, folks. Mm -hmm. It's part of the advert. They just write it off. It's a loss that they can write off. Uh, you know, it, it's just it's a power play. They they're wanting to screw. Okay, we're gonna put it this way. We go in and review movies. We have been to many theaters that a movie is, this movie is making $300 million in the United States and the theater's got us in it. We went to opening nights. I mean, the opening, you know, the first, you know, we went to the first day, we went to the premiere. Well, that's all part of it is, is because There's, typically we see it Either at midnight showings, right when it comes out, or the first day. Yeah, and there's no we've one. We've gone to different theater. theaters. We've been to different. We've went. We've been. We've cherry picked. We've been one thing. You know, we go to different theaters because they don't. Some, the problem is they don't book a lot of movies that we want to see locally. So you go out of the area. There's nobody in the theaters. Flat out, nobody there. You tell me how a movie can average ten thousand people a showing, a ten thousand people at theater, and there's three people in the theater. Mm -hmm. No, that that includes the guy that walks around cleaning the theater up after we've dumped our popcorn and stuff everywhere. But uh, we have seen more people come to Academy, uh, you know, uh, showings than we have seen in a motion picture theater. I've never seen. We have not been to one single big movie that was totally filled. Harry Potter. Oh well, yeah, but that was a double feature. Yeah, well that's true. We we did go to Harry Potter the night it came out on a double feature. Yeah. So we started at nine o'clock. The premiere was <laughs> at twelve oh one. We were there until like three in the morning. So, but no. But that time it was packed. Of course, also when we got to the theater for the nine o'clock showing, there were people waiting outside for the midnight showing. Yeah, I mean that was the whole trick is that more people came in after we got there. But the problem was is that that was a special event. For the same cost as coming to the movie, we got to see the movie that predated the one that the I said that was one. good to see both. Because movies. unless you knew what the other one was, you didn't know that one. But um, but and we also got we got special Harry Potter glasses, which are among our best three D glasses. We discovered that uh, this is not good. Round is good. Mm -hmm. Round is a far better version to put the glasses out in the thing. But um, that. It, it, it just, to me, it looks like what it means is they say that the cost of the things are too much so we just can't continue to afford to make them anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a back off is that, um, okay, we do 3D every day. We shoot everything in 3D. We've got, I don't know, we've got, I've got eight, nine 3D cameras mm -hmm. now. You know, we keep increasing our 3D cameras because it's not that difficult to shoot it in 3D. If you can shoot in high def, you can shoot in 3D. You also, you know, like you know, the three D or the true three D camera is never out of focus. And basically, you look at um, if you look at the movies, you know, you can tell it's not a true three D camera. Here's a good one: How you tell it's not a true three D camera is that they're changing the focus in and out on the people in the scene. Mm -hmm. And when they do it, it's worse than if you just did it in two D. You know, a, a change of focus and a two D thing is bad enough, but it really blurs everything out. You can have a person. I mean, I can be here, I'm in focus, and she is total blob. And then they focus her, and then I become part of the blob background. That's There's why things you, they do in 2D all the time. But it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. What happens is when you convert to 3D, it makes it worse. Yeah. <laughs>